You're listening to Hey guys, welcome to Marvel Makeup. I'm Quincy. And I'm Kay, and this is a podcast where I teach Quincy a little bit about Marvel. And I teach Kay a little bit about makeup. Watch out, there are MCU spoilers ahead. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. And today, our guest is a writer, producer, writer, producer, maybe producer very, very soon, but a writer performer from Los Angeles who also writes on the animated show Harley Quinn. Please welcome Connor, Connor Shin. Shin. Hello, hello, hi. Yay. Thank you <laughs> we did for it. being here. We did it. Nice. <laughs> screw you tech issues yeah um yeah thanks so much for being here um you know we're gonna talk about ant-man and the wasp today but just to start off uh you know connor what's your association like relationship with marvel um whether it's like the comic books or the movies or just like comic book stuff in general Uh, i'm a fan i've seen most of the marvel movies um growing up i wasn't i didn't read the comics but i was an x-men fan oh me too me too Same. The car- i love x-men yeah i love the 90s cartoon love the 90s cartoon yeah, yeah. i think uh, i've seen every x-men movie oh yeah me too i've seen the x-men movie Same, like once like or multiple times a few multiple times but definitely have seen all of them mm-hmm same same yeah that 90s cartoon i think that was kind of my entry into comic book stuff because i also didn't um read comic books Mm -hmm. and i still don't um but when i watched the x-men cartoon i was like oh this is cool i'm into this Mm -hmm. um and it was specifically like the phoenix saga like yeah that i that for some reason that was like when i started watching it that's where it it was so that Mm -hmm. was like i was like wow this is really it was really epic so it it was like a very like epic place to like be entered into this whole comic book world um Mm -hmm. cool so well today we're actually talking about ant-man and the wasp um it was released on july 6 2018 it was directed by peyton reed who directed the first ant-man um because ant-man and the wasp is the sequel um he also directed episodes of new girl and the film bring it on um and so you know has kind of like a comedy background which i think you definitely see in this movie um and the script was written by chris mckenna eric somers who are a writing team and paul rudd andre burr Gabriel Ferrari, um, who I believe are also kind of like them three are also kind of like collaborators. Um, so, you know, like most comedies, a lot of people probably sitting around a table being like, let's punch this up. Um, and just to put you in the mindset of what was happening in 2018, um, some pop culture highlights I wanted to pull um for this week highlight kind of like duos because you know ant-man the wasp is a duo um so that year nick jonas and priyanka chopra got married so a new duo that um miley cyrus and liam hensworth got married and also a star is born came out which featured bradley cooper and lady gaga so just a couple duos that also happened in 2018. A um, couple other things. Uh, Jody Whittaker became the first woman on woman doctor on Doctor Who. Um, I'm not a big fan of that show, but I remember that being kind of like a, a cultural moment. Um, I'm not going to lie. Okay. You know how mm-hmm. I keep confusing white people like who <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who and Doctor Strange. I'm like was a little like mm, same thing. Yeah, he, well, Doctor Who is very like, well, time travelly and Isn't Doctor he, Strange. Like, in a telephone booth, he's in yes. a telephone. Booth. Doctor Who's the one that's been regenerated for like thirty years. Yeah, and they have that phone booth, and it's like in England, right? Yeah, it's bo- British. And Doctor Strange is the Marvel one. Yes, yes. No, I know now, but like for some reason, my brain was just was like, I would just, if you were like, that's Doctor Who, I'd be like, yes. I knew there was a difference. Usually like, a, a really long scarf. Mm. Yeah. 
True. Mm, 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 a scarf mm, and uh yeah, and the phone booth is kind of like his main his main mode of travel. It's mm, 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 it's called a TARDIS. That's right. Is that right? A TARDIS. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 well, good thing we're not talking about Doctor Who. Mm. Um and then a couple other things that happened that year. The Pink Fong's baby shark came out that year. Which I remember being like, how does everyone know this song? Um, I got trolled on the internet for using that song by a 14-year-old girl. Because you used it in what, like a sketch or something? Uh, I posted a TikTok with, it was me and my girlfriend last year skating, roller skating, and we used a baby shark video. And on Christmas morning, we woke up to a like 12-year-old girl being like, ew, don't use this song. <laughs> <laughs> and then just like Merry but, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle of a pandemic, I was like, wow, this is peak uh 2020. <laughs> wow. Wow. The baby shark has teeth. Uh okay, bad joke. Uh a bitchy shark. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and then there's there was a thing called the Drake in My Feelings dance challenge that happened that year. I think it was this thing where people were dancing to a Drake song, but like they would film themselves outside of a car. And they would like the, while the car was going, they would dance along with the car. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that takes two people. Might as well mention it during the end and was <laughs> year review. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but let's go ahead and dive in into Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, you know, uh, I think, you know, a really fun movie. I, I, it's not one of the ones that I've watched a lot, so it was kind of nice to watch it again because it's not one of the ones that I have seen over and over. Um, Connor, I, I tend to really like the ones that have have team ups um which technically this is a team up so yeah. i don't know why i haven't watched it more often yeah. um but what's what, off the top like what was your hot take um what why do you what did your what, what did you your like about, about it the movie well i actually um ant-man is kind of a blind spot for me in the marvel universe like this is i didn't see the first one okay so i thought i'd be okay I, for some reason, I thought it'd be okay watching the second one, and I was like, oh my god, I have no idea what's happening. I mean, but um, I was able to glean what was happening, because they always do, like, a quick a reference recap. thing. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I had, I mean, Paul Rudd, thankfully, is very charming, so he was able to pull a lot of this off. Yes. But, um, I fucking love Paul Rudd. I mean, this is definitely a, like, big stuff is fun, changing scale of size is fun. Um, so there, that was, I mean, and I thought the special effects were really fun. Like, the giant things looked like the giant things. Like, it didn't look like a CGI nightmare. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't look like, it looked like an actual Pez dispenser, like, being mm-hmm. shot out of a car. Yeah, yeah. They're it like, didn't That's look cool. like that thing, like you know like the new alice in wonderland where everything's a little blurry Mm, right right (laughs) you're like this you're like this is definitely computer generated and you know looks otherworldly yeah Mm. um and and what's interesting is you know even though they are in the other in the like the real world for most of the movie they do go into the quantum realm Mm -hmm. which is very otherworldly and mostly cgi <laughs> because yeah but that makes sense mm-hmm. it's just it's annoying like when they those heavily cgi movies they all look like the quantum world and it gets yeah very annoying it's interesting because like i feel like as good as cgi has gotten like the human eye can still tell when it's mm-hmm. really fake versus like when something i don't know i just saw a horror movie uh ginger snaps and they use real practicals for the wolf and it was i love that of, movie it's so mm-hmm. good i freaking love that movie um, it's like the only movie that it fully explains what a period is yeah <laughs> Like but they menstruation? Use like, yeah, yeah. yeah oh. They confuse, they essentially don't pick up that she's turning into a werewolf because they think like it's because she's on her period. Oh. Um, and they use a practical wolf and it's kind of campy and corny, but I don't know, it kind of worked for me. And I wish it's people- extremely campy and Canadian. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just, just to say, like, sometimes I wish they would use more practicals for certain things Mm -hmm. just to achieve that like real effect. It's like the difference between like CGI fire versus real fire 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 yeah 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 well i mean go ahead uh, i was just gonna say i can understand why for safety reasons why they'd want to do cgi but yes, i'm just yes, like yes, yes. the thing is cgi is fine but you just you have to make it look 
good. Like, because Jurassic Park is C- a lot of it is CGI, but they made it look good. Like, you yeah. can't rush it and do be shitty with it. Yeah, yeah, and and I think also the I I like I kind of know from my experience that you know when you have such big movies, sometimes you're doing CGI and and from different like places, like different companies. Mm-hmm. So also making sure that. You know, this place looks really works really, really good in a certain way, but then Mm -hmm. you might take it to another place and they have like a kind of like a different aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So having to make sure all of it is kind of like smooth and seamless throughout the whole whole thing. It's it's a it's a bit of a bit of a job. Um, So, yeah, but, you know, Marvel is like we're creating a universe, so it's on us to make it all work. Mm uh, so, you know, just off of the top, what I thought was interesting is like, uh, you know, in the first Ant-Man, they talk about, you know, Hope, Janet Van Dyne, Hope's mom, and kind of like the mystery surrounding her. And they don't really show, um, you know, her in the first movie, um, mm-hmm. which, you know, you kind of wonder, OK, how how much are they going to keep that a secret during the second one? But I really appreciated that, like, from the top, you're like, OK, here's the mom. It's Michelle Pfeiffer. We know who she is, what she looks like. Um so and then they get into kind of like, you know, they recap kind of like what happened to her. Um, and I'm a huge fan of Michelle Pfeiffer. I mean, for her to come back into like the comic book fold is Amazing. kind of yeah, it's kind of epic because, you know, she was to me like Catwoman, Catwoman. in the Michael Keaton so Batman good. movie. She's so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Have you guys seen that video that kind of resurfaced recently where they, it was like behind the scenes footage of her using the Catwoman whip and just like whipping these like mannequin heads. Yeah, I saw that was dope. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy because really cool. she does she whips it all. She does it all in one take and then you hear cut and the crew is applauding her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And yeah. And so for her to come back and like be this, you know, this new superhero um, in the Marvel side, I was like, oh, I am on board for this. Um, also, I'm a huge fan of Grease 2. Have you guys ever watched Grease 2? I have seen Grease 2. It's nuts. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen Grease 2. It is, it is so funny and so, like, you know, so campy because it's pretty much like Grease, but switched. Like, she's kind of the Danny Zuko character. And then there's, like, this Australian, you know, guy who's, like, the Sandy character. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I, I always like that movie. So again, Michelle Pfeiffer, she's awesome. Um, Grease 2, it, you should try it. <laughs> try to watch it. If you I will definitely watch it. I fucking love Michelle Pfeiffer. She's amazing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think a great mom to Evangeline Lilly, you know, you're always kind of thinking like, Oh, how are they casting these people? Do they actually come off and look like they would actually be related? And I was like, yeah, I buy it. Both kind of like tall, kind of linky, long haired women. Um, and I so, love that they got rid of her wig this for the sequel. Yeah. She, yeah. Wig? She looked like hmm? whose wig? Uh, oh. Hope's wig. Yeah. In the first movie, she had like this very like severe bob. Uh, um though i read like I read in the recap see, it, like you see it when he's recapping the oh the yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and then yeah she yeah. gets rid of it though i think i might have read recently that that might have been her real hair i mean they could have easily both been wigs true true though the, this one definitely had more of a natural look than the, fir- than the first because the one. first one was so shiny it was like plastic shiny hmm. well it was hmm. it, it didn't it they i think they took the note from the first one being like okay the wig looks too wig let's do like beach waves with it yeah (laughs) something that looks like you know textured yeah textured and and looks like it's affected by air Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that one was like a helmet very stiff yep um yeah and just you know uh building out the world and and adding new characters randall park Joining the cast as Jimmy Woo, um, I think was such a fun, he was great, great choice. Um, mm-hmm. and improv had, background, yeah, improv background, and and you could totally tell like those scenes with him and Paul Rudd. You're just like, oh, they're probably having. They're so probably much just fun. having so much fun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. improvising back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, you're like there's so much footage of them just back and Dicking forth around. Yeah. yeah. 
coming up with you know a, alts and and sides mm-hmm. um and um and then yeah and then we have michael douglas returning uh uh michael pena returning as he Louise. once again killed it and they still are not utilizing him to his full ability like yes, he yes. fucking killed it again who are you talking about uh, michael pena's character he's the head of XCON, um paul red's like security business I, I feel like they gave him a weird amount of pressure to f- be funny in this oh okay. interesting like there they kept leaving the camera on him a little too long to be like this bumbling guy i did notice that yeah I and i'm notice just like that. There, there's a lot of this in this movie and we don't have to put it all in you know true, like, true. Like, i love michael pena but i'm like you don't let's have you do something else like let's not this use him more yeah maybe just give him more to do versus just be like go you know yeah. um but i i you know you the the whole uh, him like uh, recapping a story and then them cutting to um, them kind of like limp syncing the story. That um, was fun. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something that was from the original Ant Man that they did as well. And yeah, it was great to kind of see that expanded version of that because you know he was like, "I'm on truth serum," and mm-hmm. the whole thing of like, "It's not truth serum," and then he starts talking about just other things happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 at one point he does say, "Hey, can I have a suit?" And so, you know, for me, I'm just like, uh, there's the seed, you know, so many times in the MCU, there's been small seeds planted of like characters just showing up. And then before you know it, they become full fledged, you know, characters and and are brought back in later movies. I feel mm-hmm. like Michael Pena's characters, Luis definitely has that um, that potential uh, to come back and you play a bigger part give him a suit give him give him a power you give know him a suit yeah oh yeah God. teach teach him some moves you know but then let him disarm people both physically and with his charm mm-hmm. um because he's funny um and yeah and then you have uh you know uh the whole setup I, did you watch uh civil war connor mm-hmm. so yeah so I, I don't know if you caught you you know caught this Quincy you know because we we just watched Qu- Infinity War because Infinity War came out right before uh, Ant Man and the Wasp so this is set right you know between Civil War and before Infinity War because at the end for the after credit which we all got you got to the after credit I did wait this is set before Infinity War yes because mm-hmm. remember at the very very end oh I guess it is yeah uh huh. They turn to dust. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, man. Yes, yes. I got that. But for some reason, I thought this was after Infinity War, just because they kept saying like he was out of the game for two years. And for some reason, I was like, that's why he wasn't in Infinity War. Well, they were referencing the fact that he got arrested after Civil War. Yes, 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 yes. And then you remember they mentioned in Infinity War like, oh, they he took a plea deal. Mm-hmm. because of his family I, man i my brain is mush <laughs> okay remember how some a guest asked me like a few episodes ago how i'm remembering they're starting to mush are they are yeah, they they're starting to mush and like the finer details are starting to like mush together <laughs> that's that's so interesting because i feel like we've spaced them out at least like at least Pretty like well. two weeks apart right yeah. Um, How about you, Connor? Are you feeling like you like in watching this? Did I you mean, get a good sense of time? I mean, I, I, I understand what you're talking about, Quincy, because like I, de- I think after the last big one, I, which I think was Infinity Endgame? War, I think we or Endgame, I think we just got exhausted with there was so many Marvel movies because mm-hmm. there was Guardians there was um, Thor, and then there was the series that came out, and I'm like, there's, there's, I, you guys have too much content. You need a pause. <laughs> <laughs> so. Stop. Well, you yeah. know, see, the thing is, we're watching them, so since Quincy hasn't seen all of them, and we're watching them in order, she's only seen up through Ant-Man on the Wasp, so we haven't gone to Endgame yet, we haven't gone to the series, um, but I, I, will, I will say, like, after Endgame, um you did have this sense of like well what now mm-hmm. and interesting i feel like i feel like the pandemic because everything got pushed was almost like a bit almost like helped with that saturation because they did 
end up taking so much coming. Yeah. yeah, So much time. I'm just starting to miss like the finer details, like, Mm. like the pleat, like those things. Like, I think that's probably something you pick up like the second or third time. But right now it's like, I'm missing those like final, final, finer details that connect the movies to the bigger story. Now there's just, there's so much crossover in the MCU that it all starts to feel like one big movie after a while, which is kind of what they intended, but it's also, it feels like you've been in a nine hour movie after a while. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, The Quincy calls it the longest television show in history. (laughs) It's the longest TV show. Yeah. 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 And, and, and then also it kind of makes it harder to, kind of invest in like the individual stories you're just Mm -hmm. like okay yeah i get that this is kind of their own thing which you know for me it's harder for me to invest in like just the one-offs like this is the one that's just about thor just about iron Iron man because i know that the ones that with the team-ups and the and the you know group group movies are going to have kind of like just higher stakes and kind of more uh effect on the like overall a bigger, universe yeah, a bigger yeah um wait connor did you by any chance like i noticed it this time like how it definitely really felt family friendly did you pick up on that at all um ant-man and the wasp mm-hmm. like just in terms of like the action like even the lair ghosts lair mm-hmm. like i was like this looks this is this looks like an evil villain lair, but like then I remembered like oh okay this is for mostly geared for like a young a slightly younger audience than most of the Marvel movies. Um, maybe, but mm-hmm. like in like compared to what? I guess like I you know because I was watching and like Lawrence Fishburne's character literally gets immobilized by like four ants, and I feel like if this was like a Thor movie, he would have like beat them all up right but instead Mm -hmm. he goes oh okay i'm just gonna get pushed into an elevator right and Mm -hmm. i was like okay this is the difference is like there's not as many big fighting like action sequence i don't even think they really fired off fired off any guns this round like there was like one or two scenes where they like shot him but like no one was actually shooting any guns it was mostly hand-to-hand combat well there definitely wasn't that much blood yeah right yeah uh-huh. And 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 just melee in general, like there were two main action scenes, one at the top with Wasp and then the kind of the end sequence of just like the car chase through the building thing yeah. and then the going mm-hmm. down and coming back and and then you know ending up at the pier. So, yeah, the, it wasn't I would say it's it was definitely more family friendly and not like a winter soldier where it's like every like 20 minutes you're just like winter soldier going after someone blowing things up, shooting people down mm-hmm. um, or like, like, you know, in the last Thor, uh, you know, Thor just like using his hammer and just things just exploding and like, or even in just infinity war, like the space dogs going everywhere and just like, mm-hmm. just, you know, b- you know, bodies just th- being thrown all over mm-hmm. the place. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but Ghost and, you know, was scary though. I will say, I was like, man, if I was a twelve, I would be scared. Yeah, it was scary. Well, what did you think of her character and her performance? I mean, I thought she did a good job. Um, my whole thing is like, I wrote this down. I was like, people in movies that are sick never look sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when when I'm not modeling for perfume. I'm dying. <laughs> so I'm just like, sure, sweetie. Here you go. Great. Yeah, great. she You're doesn't dying. look sick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even the even out of her suit when she's kind of like in those rags, I was like, mm-hmm. those are pretty chic rags. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, whoever did those rags, can you do my next headshot? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Her, yeah, because the thing with her is that her her molecules keep dispersing and then reattaching which sounds horrible but i'm like you look great kid yeah yeah you're you're suppressing <laughs> that pain really well like mm-hmm. you know it's not like you're glowing whole, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you the special glow this mm-hmm. uh, molecular the instability hair. <laughs> the you did hair. have really great hair mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She did have really great hair. I was like, mm. and and it was kind of that. I mean, it wasn't. It it 
I mean, I have a horrible time uh, handling the frizzies in my hair. Mm -hmm. And I feel like her hair had that thing where like, even, even though it looked messy, it still looked nice. It still looked, oh, mm -hmm. you know, pretty, you know, there was a sequence where she's doing something. And I, and cause I, when you, have you guys seen birds of prey mm -hmm. the yeah. movie? I love this scene where like they give each other the hair tie. Cause that is so such a girl thing to do. And I was like, yeah, you couldn't fight with all that hair in your face anyways. But then <laughs> this time when I saw her, I was like, she was doing like a little, I feel like a little bit of hairography, mm. like she did it and like the hair. And I was like, oh, I guess you need women's hairs, hair down that you need the hair down because like for stunt people, right. Yeah. It's like a way to like cover the face. I don't know, but I'm not a stunt person. So what do I know? But that's what it looked like. Yeah, it, it is a way to kind of like, you know, mask the stunt person. And mm -hmm. and also I feel like it kind of adds to the movement sometimes. Like yeah, the drama. A bunch of flips. You're just like, oh, the hair shows adds to the movement. You know, I don't for some reason, it always bothers me when I see women with really long hair that, that don't tie it up when they're doing a lot of physical stuff. Oh, no woman would do it like that. Right. Because it would get in your face. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, I can, like women at the gym that don't tie their hair up. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. How does that how th does that not just are they just doing drip stuff? swept into your eyes? Yeah, I've seen people at the gym like long hair, leaving it down. Oof. What and are I'm they? Are like, they running or sometimes? But I'm just uh, I don't know. It just irks me. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I can barely keep my hair down just in general because I just hate it be like in my face and also it can be very thick. Mm -hmm. I, I once I once went to a, a hair stylist in New York when I was like a teenager mm -hmm. and my sister in law took me. She's like, we're going to get your hair done. Um, and I was like, cool. And the the hairstylist just kept telling me she had like this like Eastern European accent. She was like, your hair is so thick. It is like fur. You're like dog. <laughs> Your oh hair is so goodness. thick. I was like, thank you. And yeah, so she even I guess even she hadn't seen such thick hair in her life. Um, and it took her a while. To well, don't take it. her to a black barber. Shit. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I'm sorry, Kay. I'm just learning because I always have my hair up too. So I'm learning how to keep it down. Um, and I don't know how girls or women or people with long hair um, eat with their mm. hair down. Cause I get it all over my face and mm. especially also with lipstick. Cause I will eat all my lipstick. Oh, hello kitty. Oh, oh. sorry. We it's got a Come on. Come on. Oh, they get Wants jealous. To be on the podcast. All good. <laughs> yeah. Your, your, your dog and cat might be like, why well, I, I want some. Yeah. I'm jealous. surprised she's sleeping over. They're both sleeping. Mm. Oh, good. Good. Uh, Cool. Uh, yeah. And then we have kind of the, I mean, so Ava was kind of the villain, the ghost. She was kind of a villain, but we also had the Walter Goggins character, mm -hmm. Birch, who mm -hmm. was the villain. Um, I thought he was fun. He was, he was a little campy. He was like, I'm a, I'm a Southern criminal. So I'm talking with an accent. Um, I think that's just how Walter Goggins talks. No, <laughs> really? Yeah. In every, I, I'm a fan of his. I've seen him in a lot of different things, and I'm like, oh, I think that's how you just talk. Oh wow, I did not. Yeah. I don't know. I know he's what he got. His main thing was kind of like Walking Dead, or it's like one one of those kind of westerny shows that he kind of had like a breakout role in. Uh, Maybe. Okay. Sons of Anar Ar Anarchy. Oh, is he, that he uh, played a trans off. character on Sons of Anarchy? Oh interesting. oh, interesting. He's one of those actors you always know immediately. Like, well, he's very distinct looking yeah. and sounding. Yes, 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 yes. And you always just he's just recognizable. Mm -hmm. I love his name, too. It's such a like character name. Yeah, it's a good like character name. I think like that's a character out of a name. book. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and, and so, you know, it was I thought it was really great that first a fight sequence to finally see like wasp like in in her element you know the whole first movie ant-man the whole thing was like 
Pim, Hank Pim didn't want her to wear the suit because like he was scared of like what would happen to her because what happened to her mom. So she was the whole time like, let me fight. So it was kind of a great release to be like, yay, she's finally fighting. Um, and she was doing it very, very well. Um, I thought it was very telling how later on, you know, they have that conversation where, you know, he talks, they uh, they talk about how, you know, Lang went to Germany and, you know, it, it worked out badly for her and her dad. And then she was like, well, you could have taken me. She was kind of like, you could have taken me with you. And then he was like, oh, would you have gone? And and she was like, well, I guess we'll never know. But I know you wouldn't have gotten caught. And so, like, it makes me wonder, like, yeah, like, yeah, you know, it just, you know, Wasp is so awesome. But she's kind of gotten, like, you know, the short end of the stick for so much of the MCU. I kind of can't, I kind of want her to eventually come back and get like even more kind of like into it and yeah. like down and dirty. It was great to also see like the father daughter relationship mirrored throughout the movie too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Paul Rudd plays good dad. Oh my God. Yeah. Paul Rod, Paul Rudd plays good dad and is so sexy to me. That opening scene with him and his daughter was like, ah, mm-hmm. like, very and cute. it could be even more charming. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I also thought that was funny because like he was kind of living that pandemic lifestyle like mm-hmm. before that was a whole thing with us. So you're just like, wow, that that would uh, be pretty cool to, you know, live with him during that time. He yeah. told you a whole a whole heist. Yeah. Uh, was great. Tunnels. Um, and his daughter too, like just loved her story arc, uh, her growth in story arc. And like, the only thing that was weird was he, when he was like, you remind me of help. And I was like, mm, what? <laughs> yeah. That's always creepy when you're just like, you, you remind you me of, of this girl, of the, the woman I'm in love with. Yeah. It was just like, a, I know he mentioned it as a compliment, but it was just very strange. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and the thing is, is, you know, Cassie, in the comics also plays a part in the MCU. So that's kind of like another seed that they're kind of planting. Um, um, And then you have, uh, you know, Stan Lee's really fun uh, cameo. cameo. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, really quick. Can we talk about too? I don't know if you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I loved um, seeing his new relationship with the stepdad. Um, and that was just really nice and heartwarming to see. Cause I don't think we often get to see, you know, families that are non-traditional on bigger mm-hmm. movies like this. So it was really n- wonderful to see him be a part of the family and like the stepdad loving him as much as like he loves his new dog. You know, it was just really great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the mom too, like Judy Greer's character, like she totally was kind of like on board and, you know, supporting him this time, <laughs> you know, to the point she's like, you guys need a warrant. And they're like, he's like, no, they don't. She's like, okay, well, I'm still going to stand up for him. Mm-hmm. Um, even though they were kind of, they had a lot more conflict in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, then, and then you go into that kind of like huge final action sequence with like the car chase and uh, the building being handed off and then Hank Pym going into the quantum realm. Um, you know, it's the quantum realm becomes very important, uh, you know, in, in the MCU. So it was really cool to see kind of like the origin of that and like them go down there and what it looks like. Um, do you, do you have any thoughts about the quantum realm? Quincy or, or Connor or did it like make sense I it, to you? I thought it was fun um, showing them uh, well I didn't 100% understand the quantum realm but I did understand that they're shrinking so much that they're go surpassing time or something. Right, right. I thought it was fun that he um, you see Michael Douglas's character running away from was it water bears? Yeah, yeah. They're like, they're supposed to be... Like a so, size. Yeah. Like, yeah. they look cute, but they're actually predators. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, I thought it was fun that you saw Paul Rudd struggle with size. Um, <laughs> 
And when oh, oh, when he was in that school dressed with that hoodie. Oh, yeah, the school the way, sequence. The way he was running in that hoodie is the way I run. <laughs> I'm like trying to work out, but I'm tired. Because <laughs> I was I was watching. I was like, why does this look so familiar? Oh, that's what I look like. <laughs> yeah. And and I that was a, a fun callback to like the whole cap kind of argument where, you know, uh, Scott was just like, Cap needed me. And she's like, Cap? Like, oh, you guys are like best friends now. You call him Cap. And so to have her bring it up and like, oh, Cap could see you now. And he's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Get off me. Yeah, I I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was a, a fun thing to have them um, actually have a suit that wasn't working. Because, mm-hmm. you know, usually... The suits always work. Yeah, the suits always work. The tech always works. And it's only in those like, you know, specific moments where you're just like, oh, no, comms are down when, Mm -hmm. you know, you need it to happen. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it actually wasn't working and it was creating an obstacle was was fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, and that whole that whole sequence uh, in the school, I I believe the the principal, uh, I'm going to double check this, but I think he's a UCB guy. Uh, Brian Husky. Yeah. 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 Uh, he's, uh, he used to be part of a, a crew group called, were they, I think we're called naked babies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I first saw this movie immediately recognizing him because at the time him, I think also like Rob Corddry mm-hmm. and the other people who were in that improv group, they were just showing up in like everything. Like, mm-hmm. And so, like, me and me and Jacob would be, like, we would play a game where we'd be, like, naked baby. <laughs> and it was mm-hmm. kind of like a, a game whenever we could recognize one. Who is Jacob? Oh, my husband, Jacob. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, who watches everything with me as well. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so that was a fun, a fun little, little improv Easter egg. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. Um, and any any other highlights from the movie that stood out to you uh, guys? T.I. is in this. T.I. is in it. Yep. Yep. The guy that plays Polka Dot Man. Right. In this. Yeah. His whole um, his whole Baba Yaga um, bit was pretty fun mm-hmm. um, because, you know, he he was like, this is what explains it. And they're just like, OK, calm down, dude. But then, you know, kind of a version of that mm-hmm. it actually is the villain is ghost yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, always, I always get baba yaga confused with that uh no nova stroga no that stroga. lady that makes so, who makes so much pasta that it drowns a town <laughs> i've never, I've heard, never of heard, of heard of her i know i'm familiar with baba yaga but not the other lady <laughs> nova stroga is this children's book about a, a, a little old russian lady who makes so much spaghetti that it fills a town. <laughs> oh, wow. That sounds amazing. Actually, I'm really hungry. <laughs> yeah. Well, whenever I hear Baba Yaga, I'm like, oh, that's a cute story. <laughs> is it is it one of those stories that's supposed to kind of like teach you a lesson? Like, don't make too much pasta or something? No, no one learns anything. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Just a, just a story to have out there uh cool cool i enjoyed um, this series i think i enjoy this series probably more than i think most people do i don't know the comedy's great i feel like they because they can't rely on like your your typical like action sequences to make it cool like the writing and the comedy has to be really entertaining yeah. um I, lo- I love the characters um love Lawrence fishburne's appearance i was like yeah morpheus, Lawrence Fishburne, yeah. morpheus, is morpheus. Here. um that was great um i loved what else did i love I, um daughter ghost was just amazing as like a villain i want to see more of her it was really cool to see again like their like adoptive father-daughter relationship with you know with michael douglas and michelle pfeiffer's with um her and there's and hope um mm-hmm. yeah i just want i think i want more and i can't wait to see the cassie storyline pay off too yeah. i love that she like protected her dad um mm-hmm. uh love that she had like a huge grin when he was on the news like she's just a great wonderful character 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's great that she's like in on it too. I feel like a lot of times these stories, the kids don't know and, you Mm -hmm. know, later have like fucked up dark issues, which make for great characters and stories. But it's great that like she's in, um, she's in on it kind of like in Spider-Man with what's his name. Uh, Hmm. And me, Uh, the, the, the best friend for Spider-Man. Oh, Ned, Ned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's nice that he doesn't have to play that like, you know, tension of just like, oh, I, I need to go now and I'm going to miss your birthday party because yeah. there's something I need to do. And it's yeah. like, oh, OK, yeah. just tell her, just tell her she mm-hmm. will think it's cool. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention that scene where right before they turn on the or when they're turn, trying to turn the quantum realm uh, tunnel back on and and Paul Rudd switches into uh, Janet Janet's voice, uh, mm-hmm. Janet Van Dyne, and be like, comes to us by Janet. I was like, oh, that's so cute that <laughs> he did so. He did he did it so well. I was just like, very and, understated, very understated, and and I feel like he did it again with that classic Paul Rudd charm. So you know, you weren't like, come on, dude, like mm-hmm. not being like all like flamboyant about it, but just mm-hmm. being really, really like genuine and like almost you know, believable in the sense that like, he's looking, you know, she's looking at her daughter. She's looking mm-hmm. at her husband, but it's through mm-hmm. Paul Rudd's eyes. I also mm-hmm. thought they That's did really a good fun. job of like Michael Douglas and Evangeline Lilly being like, Oh, but like also being like, this is very weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Playing kind of the realness of it. Yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. Well, that brings us to the end of the Marvel portion of our podcast. We're going to transition into our stretch and share. So uh, I believe, I think you had a share last time, Quincy. So mm-hmm. do you want to do a stretch? Sure. Test Let us just roll our wrists. I feel like we do yes. this a lot, but I could use a rolling of wrists. Well, it's easy to do while you're sitting down. Yes. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and dive into my share. My share is I recently bought a pair of fuzzy slippers. Nice. To wear around the house. And nice. they have been a game changer. Uh, nice. Because I don't like it when my socks get wet. So when I put them on, I put them on like when I use the bathroom or the kitchen, because usually that's where like the floor is wet. Um, and before I was just like, oh, is it going to keep my feet that much Too warmer? hot? Yeah, but it hasn't. And and they're very nice. I sometimes even wear them when I'm not walking around. So nice. I highly recommend as things get colder, get some fuzzy slippers mm-hmm. for the house. Uh, Connor, do you have something to share from your week? Just like a, a little highlight or a tidbit, personal tidbit. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. okay, cool, cool. Or a fun Sorry. fact or a tip. No worries. Yeah. Um, what's, what's your cat's um, name? Oh, yeah, actually, oh, um, I, I was Goog- I was Googling and um, I got the name of the spaghetti lady mixed up. It's Striga Nona. <laughs> Striga Nona. Okay. It's Italian for, it means grandma witch, but she gets a magic pot that makes so much spaghetti that it fills and almost destroys her town. <laughs> Man. It's so good. very cute. That sounds so good. I'm, yeah. I, I've been fiending some pasta, like, mm-hmm. ooh, like some good pasta. Yeah. Make yeah. it myself yes. later today. Sometimes later just week. like a classic bowl of spaghetti. Yeah. Like, like a good bolognese good. or a marinara. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, speaking of marinara, um, I, there's a local wine shop in Hollywood. It's like a restaurant slash wine shop. Um, we discovered this during COVID and, uh, he, the wine shop owner slash restaurant tour got us onto this new wine and has turned me into an addict and he just restocked it. And it's here because it was in my backpack. And while we were preparing, I was like, Oh, I forgot I had this bottle in my backpack when I picked it up. This wine is amazing. It's a Julian Altiger. It's a gamay wine. It's an organic wine and it's like juice. (laughs) It is like juice. A red or white? Sorry, I muted myself. Um, It's a red wine. Um, I don't know anything about wines in terms of like Pinot Noirs and Cabs, blah, blah, blah. But this wine has turned me into a wino and I haven't had it since February. And when he told us it was in stock, I bought two. I'm probably going to go back and buy two more it's so good guys it's like very juicy bright citrus it's like i don't know it's just yummy and i 
didn't understand people who were like wine, wine, wine. And then I tried this wine and it was like, Oh, is this why? Like I've just been drinking bad, cheap wine, nothing against bad, cheap wine, but like, no, is bad this wine sucks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and Oh, and no hangovers, no oh. hangovers. Um, and I'm like, Oh, I guess this is the difference between like buying like good wine. Um, once you have it, it's, you can't go back to regular wine. Yeah. Do you drink wine? I do, I do, but like once I had the expensive stuff and someone offers me like box wine, I'm like, absolutely not. Actually, mm. the box wine from Trader Joe's is not that bad flavor wise, but you still get a hangover. Yeah. Mm. It's, once you have shit wine, it's or once you know what wine's supposed to taste like, um, everything else tastes like nail polish remover. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I've probably just never had expensive wine then because I've never I've never had a good wine. I've had like a good champagne. And for me, like the fruitiest kind of like sweetest stuff is easiest for me to drink. Mm. Um, I don't know if you remember this, Quincy, but like I brought a champagne for like a thing that we did. And like I had some of it and she was like, this is too sweet. And I was like, this is the only thing I can drink. (laughs) Is it like Jewish wine? No, it was like a sparkling champagne. That's probably why sparkling champagnes tend to be. Yeah. Sweeter. And are I was like, Jewish wines sharp, sharp? Really quick, Connor. Jewish wines are known to be sweet. Yeah. Oh, like know. almost too sweet. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't even yeah. know there was a Jewish so if, wine. If you go to like a grocery store and they have like a kosher wine or there is a Jewish wine. I think it's called. I forget what it's called, but it says like Jewish wine. If you have it, it's like. It's like someone got wine and mixed Welch's grape juice with it. Interesting. Mm, yeah. I would probably like yeah, that. Yeah, sounds like more like of your that. speed. Yeah. 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 Okay. Jewish wine. Making yeah. note. Yeah, it's okay. I- wine. I think alcohol is just an acquired taste. Like in the beginning, no one I think really likes alcohol. And then you you just make yourself like it. And then you go, oh, this is expensive stuff. And it tastes good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember the first time I had beer, I had drink it accidentally. I was like watching TV. It was like a football game at my house. And like, that's when like my brothers were there, my uncles and everyone. And, and I had just put down my drink and then I was watching the TV and I picked it up again, but I had accidentally picked up a different cup. And so I drank some beer and I was like, oh, what's this? And my uncle's like, it's my beer. Nothing is worse than I think the, 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 I think your brain gets really fucked up when you think you're drinking something and then you drink something else. Like the shock, at least for me anyways, the shock I feel is like, oh my, like it's... (laughs) How dare you? Yeah, no, I almost Mm -hmm. get upset because it was like, oh, this was supposed to be water. And like your brain like primes you for it to be water. And when it isn't water, you're like, oh, mm." Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it gets mad because it's like they're trying to trick you. You Mm -hmm. you had you put your trust in this cup and it it betrayed you. Mm -hmm. Um. Cool. So that's the end of our stretch and share. Let's go ahead and dive into the makeup portion makeup! of today's yes. podcast. Yes. Um, I, I I usually have start coming in with a look. Um, and Kate, it looks fabulous. Does you it? nailed your eyeshadow. It's just it just gets better every week you do it. Good. I I so I did the three color it, thing. I can see it. Your blending yeah. is really good. Woo. Woo. The blending's really good, really natural. Your lip always looks phenomenal. And I, like I, your foundation I, is even. Well, and I wanted to make sure that I was having, because, you know, we're talking about kind of like drag makeup today. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to have something that was dramatic, but still looked uh, right. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> that, that when you looked at it, we were like, ah. Uh, hey, that look, contrast. looks great. It looks great. You look like you could this you could wear to work. You, this is definitely by far the most eveningest of your looks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I, and it looks amazing. I, I, I didn't put on an eyeliner because I wanted to I, I wanted to see how it looked without the eyeliner. Mm-hmm. I think like if I were to do an evening out, I would, would probably add eyeliner. Eyeliner. Yep. But I think I think it does look without it. It looks subtle enough where mm-hmm. I'm like. I would, this could I would be a daytime look. Yeah. Yeah. I would feel yep. like, you know, going shopping, going grocery shopping, go to the Target, you know, mm-hmm. like this. I wouldn't feel like I'm too dressed. Yeah. Up, you know, nailed it. But then could probably go to like a meeting 
after that. Double thumbs up. Yay. Progress. Yay. Yay. It just um, took two and a half phases to get here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But today we are talking about what are we talking about? Drag Quincy? makeup specifically. I think Connor had some questions about um, drag makeup, kimchi's drag makeup in particular. Well, I don't know. If this is I don't know if you would call this drag makeup. It's a makeup line from a drag queen. It's cool. I don't know if you'd call it drag makeup. Drag makeup is a very specific thing. Yeah, I think um, I was doing some poking around um, on kimchi um, today before our call. Gorgeous. Mm. And I think, you know, one of the things she pointed out was like there's like influencer makeup, too. And like Mm -hmm. she kind of pointed out there's like unicorn pooped you out influencer instagram makeup or like what she calls brown and wet which is like that kardashian look which is like Mm -hmm. very bronzed and sculpted Mm -hmm. um and i think for her her makeup like i think people who want to wear makeup can just wear it but like i think what she's put into her product line is a lot of pigmentation so that if you are a drag queen and you want to you have you know the full colors and palette of to do drag makeup it's an affordable option cuz she was saying how when she was coming up it was really hard to find affordable makeup products that had that high pigmentation look Mm -hmm. to it because it was just Mm -hmm. out of her price point at the time yeah i think for a while it was just like mac was the cheapest you could get yeah and mac is still pretty pricey mac is i still think mac is yeah it is pretty pricey and i have um i guess i'll just get into it i have um uh i have a, a lot of kimchi makeup it turns out um i have this eyeshadow palette Great. How much is, what's the price point, Connor, for something like a, a palette I, like hers? I don't remember how much the palette was I got. I did get it on sale. So I think about each one was about 20, but that's not how much it normally is, I think. This is Virgin Mojito. Let's see. Can you open it? Ooh. Oh, so these are all green. eyeshadow, those are all eyeshadow colors. Mm-hmm. And I like the colors. Um, not all of them are shimmery, which is nice because I I usually don't like shimmer. And mm-hmm. it has like a lot of fun colors in here, like yellow, green, lime green, a teal yeah. green. And this other one is called Mango Tango. That's another eyeshadow palette. Let me see. All the packaging on her stuff is really oh, cute. It's to, it's to die for. Yes. Oh, wow. That's so cute. I've never oh, seen anyone do like... Uh, Put like yeah, details little, on the palette. The yeah, palette. Yeah. That's really cute. Fruit drawings. That's cute. Yeah. Cute. There's purple, pink, red, and orange. Um, red eyeshadow is so fun on an Asian face. Yeah. Ooh, like our, really our, well. our skin tone just is like, yes, yes, yeah. more, please. Me, yeah. me, me, me. And then I got this eyeshadow, a liquid eyeshadow that's gold shimmery called Pot de Cream. Mm hmm. These are really great colors. It's very easy to apply. Yeah. But I never go anywhere. Yeah. This one is a <laughs> highlight palette called Drama Queen. Is that is that for your cheeks? It can be. Yeah. I think it depends on how you want to use it. It's very shimmery. That's yeah. the thing. So that's why I can't use too much of it. Yeah. Mm. So if you want to do like highlighting... You can use it as a blush, but if you, it's primarily if you want to do highlighting, uh, color correcting, hence the green. Ah, yes. Interesting. I've never seen or heard of um, color correcting highlighter. That's really cool, actually. Yeah. Color correcting highlighter is something I was trying to play around with because, like, it's, I have a background in art and graphic design. And so mixing colors to neutralize colors is something I kind of know. But even then, I'm like struggling with it because I'm like, oh, was I supposed to put green here? Was I supposed to put red here? Was I supposed to put white here? Was I supposed to put yellow? Yeah. And to the, the most recent one I got, which arrived yesterday, yes. was the Bento Babes Lip Kit. Cool. This is a collaboration with Plastique Tiara. Oh, dope, 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 dope. And Have you is- opened it? Oh, oh girl, I'm, I'm going to try this shit yes. on. Yes. And, um, this is a lip kit. I did not realize that, but it's a lip liner, a lip color, and then a lip gloss. Nice. To make it uh-huh. shiny. Yeah. So would it's you wear nice. would you wear all three of those at the same time? Mm-hmm. You put yeah. the lip liner on first, 
then the remember, okay, we outline and then we right, fill, right. and then yeah. the gloss. Yeah, and you once you you let the fill dry, and then you put the gloss on. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, I didn't realize that, and so I just put the color on with the lip pencil, and I thought that looked better. But mm. I, I think I'm just sick of gloss. Yeah, I think a lot of people are moving away from gloss because mm -hmm. it because it's like sticky and shiny. It's sticky and it's just you know it's time to move on. Like yeah. I saw an ad recently for matte eyeshadow paint. Oh, interesting. And I was like, I'm not gonna buy it, but I'm like, I like where this is going. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. To what, speak what, to what? So, Go ahead. Sorry, just to ask why? What? What's the difference of matte eyeshadow paint? Like, what is? What is what's new about that? Have we have we been using? No, I haven't. I've never. This is my first I've, time hearing I've, about it. I've never seen eyeshadow, liquid eyeshadow that was matte. Oh, okay. Okay. If you ever see liquid eyeshadow, it's usually shimmery or glittery. But I saw these, and it's like it's straight up paint, and I'm like, nice. Oh, is that similar to the Fenty eyeliners that? Rihanna has. We had a guest recently who showed us some Fenty eyeliners. They were almost like crayon like. Is that similar? No. So it's like so with if you if I can the best way it's like a flat color. Like mm -hmm. so usually when you get like a liquid eyeshadow, like so okay the eyeshadow we have that's like liquidy. It's very shimmery and it has like a lot of dimension to it because it's like a liquid shimmer, okay. right? Um, and same with gloss, right? It's like a shiny wet look to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Versus if you looked, I just looked up matte fluid eye paint. This is really cool. Um, right? uh, and I it's think essentially like matte lipstick, except for your eyes. I don't know why this isn't letting me, um, click on the hmm. picture, but it's like this flat, like matte look, like, have yeah. you seen cars that have that like matte paint on it? It's that like it kind of makes yeah. it look like Batman versus how there's certain like the Porsches. It's not, have, it's not glossy. Yeah, it's not glossy. Uh, OK, OK. This yeah, really cool. most eyeshadows have some sort of shimmer or gloss to it, which I am not a fan of. But um, yeah, before that, like the best you could do was like an eye crayon or pencil, which is what it sounds like your prior guest brought on. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. this is cool. I'll have to try this because it looks really interesting. And it looks mm -hmm. like it's not meant to be blended. It's meant to just be like a yeah. one color thing. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, I just wanted to speak to Connor, what you said about like the shimmer getting everywhere. I spoke mm -hmm. with a makeup artist because sometimes some people will do my eyes first when I'm in the makeup chair and some people will do the foundation. Mm -hmm. And I, what they said generally was um, if you're doing a lot of like shimmery heavy makeup to do your mm -hmm. eyes first so that mm -hmm. you can like dust and wipe away. Yeah. The shimmer and dust um, yeah. and then do the foundation. I don't know if you've tried that or if it's still I like... Just, I I just found that out recently because before I thought like, oh, you put your foundation first and then you draw everything Same. else on. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos where it's someone talking about something non-makeup while doing makeup. Like uh, Bailey Sarian has this YouTube series where she does murder and makeup. So she'll talk about a true <laughs> crime story while doing makeup. That's cool. And she's like a makeup artist. And so she'll do like intricate makeup and i noticed she starts with her eyes yeah. and i'm like but bitch you're gonna get it. you're missing all the other stuff but then she'll do it and then she'll clean it up yep so and then when like, she does the base eh. like anything that that's fallen on her face she can clean before yes. she does it yeah yeah because mm -hmm. that way you don't have to put like a napkin over here and do this shit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. interesting yeah. interesting yeah. Yeah, because once that powder or liner gets mixed in with that foundation it is not coming off it's hard to clean yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah. yeah so it's yeah, easier yeah. to put it on top of it instead of like trying to clean it. Yeah. yeah. And then to highlight or two, um, Connor, have you tried like different techniques with it? Is it like, are you only using a brush? Are you, have you tried using just like your finger and just kind of like dabbing it on instead? I uh, normally, if I do use it, I'll use my finger because I'll try to just use like a touch, like, like, like a little on the corners of my eye or some mm -hmm. shit. But even then, I'm like, it's still too much. I, I don't know. I don't think I'm doing it right. <laughs> oh, you know what you could do is you could either like try to like tap it, right? Just to get like mm -hmm. the residue off, or maybe mm -hmm. like I've seen sometimes with lipstick, mm -hmm. if it's like too much, like just, mm -hmm. you know, doing the 
kiss on the Kleenex help. So maybe if you could like dust off, dust it off on a Kleenex before you apply, it might help with the application. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I still need to play around with it, but that being said, the products themselves work very well. Yeah. Like the, the lip kit was a, uh, you could tell it's a quality product. Yeah. Yeah. Like it went on real smooth. Cause I have other like lip brush shit and mm. um, I was like, I mean, it's okay, but I, there's just one color that I have that's really nice, but it always dries out my mouth. Yeah, matte lipsticks do that to me. I love matte lipsticks, but it yeah. just dry. Like you can then start seeing like the yeah. cracks in my lip cause it's yeah. drying out my lip. Yeah. And it's one of those, it's one of those liquid ones that dry and it makes it worse. So I was- Yeah, 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 yeah. So was this, it th this lime crime by any chance? Was it what? Lime Crime? I don't think so. Okay. I love Lime Crime's um, matte lipstick, but it just it just dries out my lips and I don't... Well, everyone's like, put chapstick on before. And I'm like, I did, but it's still... Yeah, but, it, but sometimes if you put chapstick on, then the product... It doesn't stick. Stay. Yeah. yeah. You have to find that beautiful balance where like it just absorbed the chapstick. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Day I will thoughts? say when I put my lipstick on, I'm always... That's... Uh, where I'm just like, oh, my lips are so dry. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have to put it on more to mm -hmm. cover up the cracks. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a question, though. For those palettes, uh, especially the red one, because I once tried red uh, eyeshadow and it didn't go too well <laughs> for mm -hmm. me. Um, on that palette that had the red ones, um, what, what combination would you use? Can we show oh. the palette again? Yeah. Um, what's cool is like, if you follow her Instagram, you'll see people using them. So you'll get a bunch of fun ideas on how to combo them. Like uh -huh. you'll see like orange and, um, red or blue and purple. Um, you can have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Generally, like, Kay, with, you with all these colors, they all, I feel like, cause they're kind of complimentary. Yeah. They all compliment. You could use any combination of these. Yeah. And I think they would work. I saw and like a simple way. Oh, wait, Connor, Connor, if you hold it back up again, could you hold yes. it? Like if you just go even across the top, like just play tic-tac-toe mm -hmm. with it oh. is pretty great. The only thing that I would say is a little challenging is the purple, orange, blue going straight down because mm -hmm. orange and blue are what's the opposite colors, right? Can Contrasting you, colors. I, I feel I feel like um, you can make them work. Yeah. Yeah. I would just say the blending might be a little bit challenging to start with, like do the mm -hmm. blending with the other more, the Some colors that are colors. closer together so that if you do like make a mistake, it's harder to see. Yeah. But, okay. it, but they are complimentary, so it should be fine. Yeah. yeah. Like it also depends how you apply it. Mm hmm. Like in terms, well, the way uh, we Quincy taught me is I I do the middle color, the middle color in the middle, and then mm -hmm. and then I do the darkest color on the outside, and then the lightest color on the inside. And every single time, like I tried to do that this time today, every single time I uh, apply it, I diffuse. I just try to like buff it, buff buff it, it. as much <laughs> as possible buffering it um so it doesn't look like there's three different sections mm -hmm. um, unless that's I, the look you're going for yeah but but i'm 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 curious to be thinking if you have colors that are so different is it is it just like you lean into that of like um no. if you want to show off all the different colors i would take it easy on the blending okay yes yeah yeah, because yeah, like the blue and orange would muddy and turn like brownie. Yeah. Mm. So if you want to show all these different colors popping, you would just carefully put them on and not necessarily blend them. Like I don't, I'm them. I'm for me with my eye shape, I'm not a big fan of blending eyeshadow because I feel like it makes the it makes my eye look flatter, mm. and not in a good way. So do you do a Connor, like just then one, one shade, like, do you, do you sweep it across your eye? How, like, do you take it up to your eyebrow or do you do anything like under? Very, very rarely do I take it up to my eyebrow. Mm. Um, like maybe not even halfway. Mm -hmm. It also, cause I usually also wear eyeliner. Mm. 
So it, in um, if I'm doing a multicolor thing, I, I usually won't blend at all because it was such a pain to get the, the colors together and clean. And uh, if I do blend, it's usually me attempting to do a smoky eye. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so just, uh, but your usual kind of procedure is eyeliner and just one color. Put the shadow first, eyeliner last. Oh, okay. Cool, yeah. cool. Interesting. And, you know, I, I, I feel like I was trying to, I was doing that as well in terms of like when i was just starting i was just like oh one let's see what mm -hmm. that looks like mm -hmm. um so yeah knowing that i don't have to use three every time also yeah i think we should definitely okay look at the uh eye eyeshadow matte because it'll definitely i think it's just meant to be one color mm -hmm. but again i think okay. that came from probably like instagram that like one that yeah but you're yeah. creating like a shape with it too also yeah, like yeah. i find like the they'll have like those eyeshadow tutorials like what quincy said where the darkest on the outside middle shade and then the inner corner shade but i find that's hard to do on asian eyes mm. so for me i just kind of have to experiment and see what looks best i i i feel like i will enjoy doing that more because i feel like there's so many i bought a couple mats when we were first starting i was like oh there's so many colors Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, if you like, I want to use them all. But then like when you actually try, you're like, ah, this doesn't look you right. Know, you can use them all, just not all at the same time. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, and also trying to make sure. Yeah. I, but I want to use them all. At the same time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> use all the colors, use, use all, all the colors. colors, make my eyes all the way up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I guess, I guess there's just sometimes when I see certain people, um, n not necessarily, uh, not even like, I know in drag, like they use a lot of color and there's so many different layers, but even just like people like cosplayers or mm -hmm. I, I, I watch a lot of like react videos of like people who, you know, react to episodes of Marvel episodes or Marvel movies. And especially for like when they were watching like Loki, since that, that, um, show what was so like blue and green and gold they were using those combinations and i was like how like how like were they able to kind of create that look it looked it looked all cohesive but at the same time you could tell there's multiple colors um so i guess just experimenting and being like let's see how this look is kind of the way mm -hmm. to go <laughs> mm -hmm. it also for me what helps is um that little brush thing that comes with the uh eyeshadow kit that that don't do shit mm -mm. right get yourself some nice brushes Typically, preferably no. a thin one that almost they look like paint brushes oh and get yourself like a good brush not like with a mate almost like a f uh, a flat edge so you could really do some stuff with it yeah oh okay i didn't realize how good I mean, I knew good brushes were good, but mm -hmm. I had these cheap ones and then just got these new brushes that are a little bit better. And I was like, oh, OK, because it helps mm -hmm. you control the mm -hmm. where the pigment is going versus like the the yeah. other brushes I had just weren't doing it and was getting it like all over the place. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. like unless you're using like expensive makeup when you when you see like those shadow palettes like on cover girl and stuff and then you're like how come i doesn't look like that when i do it they're using a lot of it oh like okay. a lot of it okay yeah i will say that when i did it today mm -hmm. i i purposely was like let's go heavy mm -hmm. <laughs> so we i can see it um and kind of so i could notice where the the different sections were gotcha. um and i was surprised by how when it was done it still didn't look like I had a ton of stuff on. I think maybe because also the colors are very like yeah we have we picked very nude warm colors. Yeah, yeah, this is the palette I used. Um, yeah, that's very subtle. Yeah, yeah. subtle. Um, but when I was applying it, I I thought I was still kind of like had a lot on the brush. Um, but yeah, so that's that's interesting to know that they also are using a lot and i, I just want to I, I think i want to try doing more colors like i've tried to do more natural looks and so maybe why? moving forward what was that why just to see how it looks because i got all these like i got these palettes and i and i haven't really used many of the colors oh on yeah them. okay yeah 
So oh, is that NYX? Mm-hmm. NYX, yeah, yeah, shadow palette. Yeah, um, just experiment with those. Like, do I sometimes I even put eyeshadow on the bottom lid? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a new thing I'm seeing too. Um, that I actually really enjoy. And I'm like, it makes sense. Why not put it there too? Mm -hmm. I was going to say for your highlighter um, and for shimmer too, Connor, is Mm -hmm. like uh, kimchi does it. She'll put shimmer under. I mean, this is for like full drag. She'll put like shimmer under her eyelid and then Mm -hmm. like outline it just to make her eye appear even larger. I think it's cool. I think I'm going to snag that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, And for the under eye shadow, what 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 kind of inspired you to do that or what about that look um, you were just like, this i think appeals i saw it somewhere and i was like you know what? i'll try it like a bold like a bright it's usually a bright shade too like okay. orange or white or something huh interesting and so the next time you get like a pencil or something like an eyeshadow pencil it, it'll probably be easier to do with the pencil um just try it on the under lot under on the bottom lid like uh, like the on the eye line or on the actual it's, here's the thing Kay. there's no rules <laughs> there's no Just rules figuring out what anyone that says there's rules is lying or doesn't know what they're doing well, do you, uh, well, and the thing is, I don't know what I'm doing. I I just want to try both to- ways. Try both ways. See which one you like. Okay. Yeah. Because for a while, both trends were the thing. Like I remember reading about both being like, "Notice how Sone's pink's eyes pop here? It's because she's doing the liner right on the lid." Oh, and other okay. people are like, "Do not do that." <laughs> Because mm. they'll argue like l- liner on the lid makes your eyes smaller. But like, again, it's different for different people. Mm-hmm. It shows up differently for different people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this has been so great. I am inspired yeah. to experiment. Connie, thanks for the share of the eye sh- matte eyeshadow. I had not heard about this. I want to play with I this. I just heard about it. It's so, so cool. I'm, I'm looking at these curious. women right now. And right now they just like painted on little like arrows at the corner of their eyes and it looks oh. fucking dope and then they yeah. just line their eyes and i'm like i want so it fun yeah and it's such a easy way to get a pop of color without committing to a whole yeah. eye yeah Qu- quincy did you have a theme to relate to uh, oh my goodness i forgot <laughs> i forgot so sorry it was just i was so enthralled with with ant-man and the wasp too like i like felt so good leaving it and then i then i did my deep dive on kimchi and i was like dude this is gonna be so much fun to talk about Mayo that i completely forgot about the theme well i i have a theme that i, I usually do a thought apply theme. Tie in, Connor. <laughs> um, so uh, the the theme that I thought would be applicable is that you know we're starting to uh, kind of expand our idea of what makeup is and and like how to you know like you said experiment, try things, see just what it looks like, and and get into this whole uh, new realm of like not following the rules. Now that we spent so much time kind of teaching me rules and how to do things, we're expanding into areas where we're not uh, have Mm -hmm. rules, which is like uh, the quantum realm where the same rules, the rules rules of time and space don't apply to the quantum realm like they do in the real world. Um, So that was my attempt to create a thing. I completely forgot. Wow. (laughs) All right. Well, I think that uh, brings us uh, to the end of our podcast for today. Thanks, Connor, so much for joining us. Um, Is there a place where can people find you? Yeah. Or is there Uh, anything specific you'd like to plug? I'm on Twitter. (laughs) Cool. Cool. Uh, People use that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think it's just that Connie Shin. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, great and yeah and uh you know i guess uh, watch harley quinn watch harley quinn watch harley quinn please a great really funny show uh i i remember when it was on dc universe i was like oh i don't know i don't think i can get that but then when it went to hbo max i was like yes i have that and i gobbled it up mm-hmm. it is mm-hmm. such a funny show and if you'd like to reach us Reach out to us or find out more about Marvel Makeup. You can follow us on all social media at Marvel Makeup, or you can email us at marvelmakeuppod at gmail.com. Please rate and review and subscribe wherever you find your podcasts. And please give us five stars so that our Asian moms will know that listening to us can actually be pretty fun. Thanks, everyone. Catch you next time on Marvel and Makeup.
Bye. 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 Marvel on Makeup is hosted and produced by Quincy Cho and Kay Kanapu. Quincy is an actor-writer based in Los Angeles, California. Kay is a writer-performer for Filipino AF and an alum of the CBS Diversity Sketch Showcase. You can follow them on Twitter and Instagram at Quincy Dinosaur and at Kay Kanapu. The music for Marvel on Makeup was composed by Clarence Yap and our artwork was designed by Patty Lynn. You can find them on Instagram at Clarence underscore Yap and at Patty Lynn.jpg. See our show notes for even more info. Marvel Makeup is also a member of the Potluck Podcast Collective, a network of Asian American hosted podcasts. Please check out our fellow Potluck pods by going to the website, podcastpotluck.com. Life gets a little crazy sometimes. Sometimes it's confusing, sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's beautiful, and sometimes it can just piss us off. Enter First of All Podcast. It's a safe space for real conversations about the things that we all struggle with, celebrate, contemplate, and work through in our daily lives. I'm your host, Mindy Chang. I'm an actor, filmmaker, and entrepreneur with a colorful background, full life, and brilliant friends who I love to unpack life with to share with all of you. They are everyday people like you and me, ranging from award-winning artists, cultural icons, powerful CEOs, my hilarious childhood friends, and even my mom. Tune in for honest conversations on mental health, dating, sex, family, career, culture, and everything in between. Listen to First of All wherever you find podcasts. Part of the Potluck Podcast Collective. Thanks so much again for joining us, Connor. Thank you for coming. No, thank you. This is great. I I just got to say that, I don't know if you remember this, but we did an Asian AF show where you did uh, one of my sketches. I do remember that. Oh my gosh. That is still one of my favorite like performance memories. I was thinking about like like the fact that we haven't done a show in so long we and we're supposed the, yeah. to have a show with you right before covid right happened. before COVID. yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, was, I, I was supposed to do stand up and then yeah. lockdown happened i was doing the promo drawings i feel like i just posted yours and then like two days later it was like what do we do yeah it was it was the friday of that week yeah that everyone or no the the monday of the week after everything shut down mm-hmm. um so yeah, so I was just thinking about that and you know, thanks for being awesome and funny and you're hilarious. So. Yeah.